and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. There's a stamp set in the holiday catalog called Cup of Christmas, but it is not just for Christmas. And today I'm going to prove that using an adorable cup image that's gonna be stamped, as well as a really fun masked background using a sponge brayer. Here's the card we're gonna be creating together. And of course it can have any occasion greeting on it that you would like. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon that's next to it. That will give you notifications when I upload a new video as well as when I'm live right here on YouTube. Let's head over the stamp table and let's get started on today's card. Here's a close up of the card we're recreating together. Isn't this cute? And we're gonna focus on this background here using the mask first. I'm gonna begin by protecting my work surface. You're gonna to wanna to do that because you don't wanna get ink on top of your table. We are gonna be doing quite a bit of brayering as well as sponging. I have a piece of cardstock here that measures four and a quarter by 11. If you are here visiting from YouTube, you'll find a link down in the video description below that will lead you over to the pictures and the cutting dimensions and supplies that I'm using today. I've scored it in half right before you joined me. I'm going to use my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to attach my mask or my stencil. I'm really enjoying this one. And I'm going to attach that here to the front. Now, a viewer here on YouTube gave me a fabulous tip when I used these similar masks a few weeks ago that I want to share with you. I was taping it from the front, which of course, then I had to be very careful about the areas that I had taped. And she said, turn it over. And I was like, oh my gosh, that makes such great sense. Thank you all for sharing your comments. They certainly help. So I've turned it upside down and I'm gonna be using the Low Tack Delicate Surface Frog Tape. You can find this at any hardware store. I'm gonna pull off two small pieces. And remember, this is the back side. I'm looking to make sure the stencil is as straight as possible and I'm gonna tack it down here from the back. Then I'll flip it over. And this is why you need your work surface protected because we're gonna to have to do some brayering off the edges in order to make sure we've got complete coverage. This is the sponge brayer. I absolutely love this. It does come with a couple attachments to it. These pop off, you can rinse them with mild soap and water underneath the faucet. And even though they do get stained because of the pigmentation and a prior ink color, you can use them over and over again. And I'm gonna be using a very unassuming color for this background and it's gray granite. And now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna load the brayer. It's very important that you don't load it just like this because then you're only going to get ink in a very small area. So I'm going to make sure that I'm going all the way around inking it evenly. And then what I'll do is I'll start up here at the top and I'll just roll. Remember that the mask is positioned so you can turn the paper so that it's comfortable for your hand. One of the important tips I want to give you about the sponge technique and the brayering is that it often looks a lot darker when you remove the stencil or the mask. So start lightly and then we're going to take a peek and see if it looks the way we'd like it. So I'm going to take a quick look here and I'm going to lift it. Oh, that looks really, really good. Now I know I have some areas here that are a little bit lighter and if I want to, I can go back over them and fill them in. And then all we have to do now is just remove the mask. This can be rinsed in the sink under lukewarm water and then let it set aside to dry. The same then can happen with this. We'll go ahead and rinse that and let that air dry as well. I'm gonna set the card base aside and I've got a scrap piece of Whisper White cardstock here. I'm gonna be using the black Memento ink pad to stamp my cup images. And I've got the outline cup image here. This comes from the stamp set called Cup of Christmas. It also has coordinating dies, which we're gonna be using and I'll show you those in just a second. But I wanna call your attention to these cups here. You're gonna notice that the handles go in both directions. And that's because this is a patent pending stamp, which means it's reversible, which means this photopolymer image can be peeled up and repositioned on your block going in either direction. Now the photopolymer here is slightly stained because of the usage of the pigment that I've used before. It does not harm the image or impede on the clarification of the image when you use it in a different color. The outline cup image here only does go in one direction, but the good news is there's dies for cups in both directions. So I'm gonna stamp three of these. So I've got my first one here, and then my second, and then my third. The cup of cheer dies are here, and you're gonna see again, like I pointed out, that there's dies in both directions. Now I've pulled out the one where it's gonna die cut the handle on the right hand side. Now I'd like to give you a tip about die cutting these. Since this is an outline image, what I like to do is I like to line it up, seeing a little bit of that outline, and I like to use a post-it note flag or tab to hold it in place as I run it through my die cutting machine. And I'm gonna do that now with all three of these. Now that all three are die cut, 
my next step was to include some sort of an opening here in the center. And I started to look through the things in my stamp studio and I thought a heart, that would be great because that's reminiscent of just about any occasion. And I found one here in the support ribbon dies. And I used the small one that's here and I lined it up here in the center. I found that I could stack two of these together at one time. I took my heart die and I placed it where I wanted it on the top. And again, I used another post-it note flag to hold it in place as I cranked it through my die cutting machine. And I did that on all three. I now have three cups with an opening here in the center with the small heart. And now this is when I chose to add my color. Once again, you'll want to protect your work surface. And I'm going to start with my first cup. For this one, I'm going to use the Mango Melody ink pad. And I'm going to be using a sponge dauber. It's very important that you use a separate sponge dauber for each color because you wouldn't want to muddy the colors by mixing them up. I love this because you can put your finger up inside, which will help you control the cover. Now the ink picked up from here is very concentrated. So what I like to do once I ink it up is I like to tap it off here on my grid paper to make sure that I can control the coverage. I'm going to turn the cup upside down and then I'm going to rub back and forth. Now I can go back and I can load up more ink on my sponge dauber and I'm going to work across the top. I am looking to make sure the top of my cup has the highest concentration of color and I'm going to slowly work my way down. Once I get here to about the halfway point, I'm going to flip the cup around, placing my hand here at the top. I'm going to reload my dauber, make sure it's not too dry. And I'm going to start in the center and then graduate the shade down. So I want the bottom of the cup to be lighter than the top of the cup. But I definitely want a little bit of color there. I repeated this exact same process now with two other colors. I did one in Granny Apple Green and also one in Melon Mambo for a really pretty color palette. I've got a small piece of Whisper White cardstock here and this is where I'm going to stamp my greeting. I've pulled out the words from a stamp set called Special Celebration. I don't know about you but oftentimes we overlook greeting stamp sets and they are really important if you are a card maker. I love this one because there's greetings not just for the outside but for the inside of your cards as well so it makes it very inclusive. You'll be able to find this special celebration stamp set and the current Stampin' Up! annual catalog and the cup of Christmas that we're also using in the holiday catalog. Now if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you're interested in receiving complimentary copies, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on contact me. And then I'm just going to stamp that right here in the center. I'm going to bring my grid paper back inside to protect my work surface one more time because I want to add a little bit of color to the word good just to bring in the continuity of this card. And I'm using the light granny apple green, which coordinates with the ink we just used, Stampin' Blends alcohol-based marker. I'm going to choose to use the thicker end of the marker and I'm going to scribble right over those words. There's no rhyme or reason to this. That alcohol will take about 10 or 15 seconds to evaporate, become more of its true color. And then what I'll do is I'll flip that over and I'm going to add adhesive to the back side. I'm going to layer that now on a small piece of gray granite cardstock to coordinate with that brayered background that we just created. And now we're ready to put the card together. And this is where my tips are going to come in. I have an important tip about the cups to make sure that they're balanced properly on your card. So the very first thing I'm going to do is start by adhering my greeting. I'm going to flip that over. I've got my full size dimensionals here and I'm going to add them generously, one in each of the four corners. I'm going to use my paper piercing tool attachment on my take your pick tool to remove those paper backings. This now will get adhered here to the left center side of the card base. Now we're ready to situate our cups. I wanted my mango medley one on the bottom, so I'm just gonna lay it here. And then I want my granny apple green, and then my melon mambo. So I'm just gonna lay them here how I want them. I was careful to make sure that the cardstock from the previous cup didn't overlap on the opening of the heart. Once you have those lined up, I want you to make sure that they're gonna fit within the perimeter of your card. So at the top and the bottom and the side. I'm gonna slide this off to the left and I'm bringing in my silicone craft sheet. Liquid glue, adhesive, and hot glue will not stick to this. It simply rubs right off, which is going to ensure that I keep my work surface here sticky free. Absolutely love this product. So I can see here that these cups are going to be slightly tipped. I want to tack them together to make the process of aligning them up on the dimensionals even and easier. So I'm going to start here at the bottom. I'm flipping that over and I'm going to line adhesive along the top. 
I'm gonna lay that here and I'm gonna take my green one and I'm gonna tip it as I had it on my card and I'll tack that in place. Now I'm very careful to come back here to make sure that my positioning is going to be proper. I'm gonna add a little adhesive in the upper left-hand corner here. And this one I wanted tipped a little bit to the left. And before I get too far, I'm gonna make sure that it's all gonna fit nicely here on top of my card base, and it does. So I'll press those in place to create the cascade. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add dimensionals, but I wanna be very careful that I don't add them to this side because they're going to rest on the greeting, which is already elevated. You wanna make sure that you're compensating for the depth. So what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of adhesive here and here, and we'll add dimensionals mostly on this side. So I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive here and a little down here and now on this side which is going to be the right side I'm going to add my dimensionals I'm going to take some of my full-size dimensionals and I'll mount them here at the top here where they intersect and then here at the bottom the mini dimensionals fit perfectly for the cup handles so I'm going to take my take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment it works wonderfully for helping me pick up these small little pieces then what I'll do is I'll remove those paper backings just like we did with the greeting. And now we can go ahead and attach this to our card. I'm looking again to make sure that I'm within the perimeter of my card, top, bottom, and the sides. Also making sure that I'm not going to cover up the greeting. And then once I'm happy with that, I'll just tack that in place. Now there was one more thing I added to my card just to give it a little pizzazz and a little extra texture. And you're gonna see I've used quite a few of these, but these are the heart epoxy droplets. Now they are clear. You can color them with your alcohol-based markers, but I chose to use them clear. They have glue dots already on the back, which makes them fun and easy to use. I'm gonna place one here at the upper left of my greeting. I'll place another up here near my cup. And the last one's gonna go down here in the bottom right corner of my card. You might not be able to appreciate it in the video, but let me just tell you that little bit of clear epoxy provides a lot of texture to the front of this card. I wanted to share with you the other masks that are included in this packet. There's a beautiful damask pattern. There's also a really fun tree pattern, which is great for masculine and outdoorsy cards or scrapbook pages. And finally, a basic polka dot pattern. This package includes all four, including the one that we've used here on the background of our card. So here's the card we created today, the one I created before you joined me. If you have enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. It certainly helps, and I look forward to having you join me next time. Have a great day. 